Joining us now, the senior Democratic senator from New Jersey, Cory Booker. Look, you've spent an awful lot of time on the, time on the campaign trail. We know uh, what your argument is. We know who you support. But give us your honest read as somebody who has been on the ground, who's talking to folks inside the campaign. What are you going to see tonight? Look, I, I'll give you what my honest gut right now. I felt worried. Uh, as Harris Walsh were saying, we're three points behind. But something happened about seven or ten days ago. I think it was as Kamala was making her, excuse me, the vice president was making her really powerful, very pragmatic closing arguments. And it seemed like Donald Trump seemed to double down on the hate and the bigotry and the meanness and the cruelty from Madison Square Garden's fiasco to even just things, saying things like firing squads for Lynn Cheney yesterday using the B word to describe uh, elected leaders. Um, and so I, I just think people are having enough of that. And when I talk to my friends who are literally door knocking or organizing campaigns in states around the country, they're seeing that at the door, especially amongst uh, older women who are just fed up, uh, who might have voted for uh, another Republican candidate. But to put this person back in the White House, who is already putting down a pretext for more uh, 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 big lies. I think people just want to turn the page on that and, and move us forward. So if you're going to tell the story of this race, should Kamala Harris win it, who are you going to, who's that, who's going to be the main character of that story? I, I think the heroism of Joe Biden cannot be uh, forgotten. I, I mean, his, his patriotic uh, sort of instincts uh, to put his country before his own personal interest was the ignition point. And Kamala Harris went into outer space like a rocket uh, uh, that was just inspiring, I think, all of us. When we went into that convention, the energy, the enthusiasm, but yet the sobered understanding that votes were going to have to be earned. Here is a woman that then did the work. I've, I've known her for a long time. This is the best I have ever seen her. Every day with grit, guts and gumption going out there and earning the trust and the faith of the American people. So I, I just I respect our president that we have now, uh, but she's a shooting star. She has been illuminating us all with her brilliance, uh, luminescence, and I think inspiring our country at a time uh, that many of us have needed it. We're hearing a lot about enthusiasm in the campaign. We're seeing you know, long lines and a lot of early voting, and it's hard to tell. You can't tell who's voting and for whom. But how do you feel about the campaign? Because it has been, in all of our memory, uh, the most, you know, violent, threatening, um, just challenging campaign to cover. The rhetoric has been so, so unusual, and it seems to be normalized. And we're told that it is a very, very tight, dead heat race. What do you make of this? And how do we bring the country together if it's, well, if it's how, however it ends? Yeah, well, you, you all know me well enough to know my heart. Uh, I think America's best when we focus on trying to put more indivisible into this one nation under God. And the, the brand of politics we've had, um, especially uh, as evidenced by uh, a meanness of Trump, who has talked in rallies about punching people, who is firing squads and using this language that I just... Uh, had never seen before in a Reagan or a Bush or a McCain. Uh, th this is not the Republican Party I grew up with that I know. This is not the American politics that I know. And I will tell you this. I'll invoke the spirit of Mr. Rogers, who was a guy that taught generations of children about kindness and decency, empathy and love. Uh, he said in times of crisis like this, he said, look for the helpers. There's always helpers. Well, as I've traveled this country for this campaign, uh, I've seen a lot of Americans who understand uh, that we have to be foot soldiers of our democracy now, who've given up uh, their jobs. I've seen people who've left their own states who have put themselves uh, on volunteer shifts or really treated this like a full-time job of knocking on doors. So many heroic Americans. The question before about who should be heralded uh, in this election, uh, should Kamala Harris win, um, it's actually not her. It's the American people who are doing so much to not have us go back uh, to the darkness, to the divisiveness, to the us versus them. 
we're really choosing what democracy is about. It's about compromise. It's about coming together. It's about, it's about it being just us, one country, one nation, uh, one people. That brings me back, Senator, though, to the question that so many people have is they don't understand how this race is tied. And I think objectively, Kamala Harris seems to be having a good time. She laughs a lot when she is on the stump. We saw her knocking on doors. I think it was in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania yesterday, surprising some folks. We just got word that uh, she's heading to a, a DNC phone bank. Um, you can imagine picking up the phone in your house and it, it's, it's Kamala Harris checking to make sure you've gone out to vote or are planning <laughs> to go out to vote. It does right. seem like she is having uh, maybe a better time on the campaign trail than, than I think anybody should or she <laughs> likes because it's I mean, brutal out there. But to go out when there's only a couple of hours left before the polls close on exactly. the East Coast. Exactly. But so why she is might it be still worried. tied? Why is it still tied? I know people must ask you this, especially, of course, on the Democratic side. Well, first of all, let me just say something. When she was on Saturday Night Live, um, not only was it funny and brilliant, but well, I love that she made chill. fun of herself. <laughs> Yes, she was having a great time. She, the humility, the self-deprecation. First of all, you will never see that from Donald Trump, but it was it was joy. And in the convention, I felt joy. You know, my pastor when I was growing up uh, would always say that weeping may endure through the night, but joy, joy cometh in the morning. And so let me tell you something right now. If folk stay in line, if folk understand that this is an election that is not should I vote but I must vote. If there's a, that urgency, if people come out today at some of the numbers I'm seeing in some of the states, you say this election's gonna be close, I say we could shut this thing down. I say it could be called even tonight because I'm seeing things I haven't seen before, or at least not since 2008. This momentum building, a zeitgeist emerging in our country, uh, where we're already seeing things with the Iowa poll that are beginning to say, well, maybe there's something more going on than the pollsters are seeing. I am seeing people say enough is enough. But I want to choose joy. Men I want to choose her. light. I want to choose possibility. What about the Bradley effect and, and the fact that some men may not be willing to say that they won't vote for her? Yeah. Well, look, um, I, I, you know, God, good luck, America. I hope it's a girl. <laughs> you know, it's <laughs> like this is uh, women are doing it. They're outvoting men. They're, they're voting greater numbers. Um, they're leading, uh, I think, households in many ways. Uh, I, I've seen already uh, experiences where I have guys come up to me and say, I really have no choice. My girlfriend will kill me and my wife will kill me if I don't uh, vote for Kamala Harris, because uh, I think there is uh, something going on in this nation where folks know uh, that there is health care at stake. There is reproductive rights at stake. There's bodily autonomy at stake. And when you see horror stories like we just saw in Texas with somebody going to an emergency room three times because they're having a miscarriage, but can't get the health care they need, and it ends in tragedy. Um, I think that folks uh, in general, men, but especially women, they're voting with their empathy. This may not affect them directly. You know, uh, J.D. Vance talking about older women shouldn't care about these issues. That, that's so insulting. They're voting because they know what it's like.